Hello Techies. In the previous session, we have learned how to get the list of items from the drop down by using extract data from web page action as part of browser automation. Now, in this session, we will learn the same thing to get the list of items from the drop down by using run JavaScript function on web page. For these two things, we don't have any difference, but whenever you are going to use run JavaScript function on web page action, you should have an idea about the JavaScript, how to use that in the Power Automate desktop. Now, let me go back to the browser. Before running the JavaScript function on web page action, first of all, I will show you how to write the code and how to get the data from the dropdown by using JavaScript. Before writing the JavaScript, I'm going to right click on the web page and then I'm going to click on inspect. Once you click on inspect, you will get developer tools for the web application. There you can see I'm having elements, console, sources. These are all related to the developer tools. Now, what is our agenda? I need to get the list of items in my dropdown. So first of all, I need to get the ID of the dropdown. How can I go ahead and get it by using inspect i'm going to select the arrow over here that is inspect and then i'm going to mouse over on the drop down now if you observe over here i got the id which are related to the drop down such select area labeled by equal to livestock market and id you can see equate stock select now we are going to work with this id just keep this id readily okay now we are going to work with JavaScript. So how can we go ahead and get the list of items over here from the dropdown? To work on the JavaScript, I'm going to use console on the topmost, and then I'm going to provide the JavaScript. First, we will see how to get the element ID. Now to get the element ID from the web page, I'm going to use document dot get element ID. Now, if I'm going to give some values out here, there you can see it is going, trying to get the values, right? Get element by ID. Now, I'm going to give the same ID over here that is equite stock select is the ID which we got it for the drop down. And then I'm going to close the brackets and then I'm going to give semicolon and then I'm going to click on enter. Once you click on enter, now you will get the element details over here. See, whenever I'm going to mouse over on the left hand side, it will getting populated. There you can see once again, right? Now let me expand this once again, that you can see I'm having select that is drop down, and you are having area label labeled by equal to live market stock cell label one and the ID you can see over here, equate stock select, right? And inside that, that you are having options that is opt groups or which we call if you once again expand that each and every group having some values over here that you can see i'm having label is broad market indices that is optional groups another one sectorial indices thematic indices strategy indices and others and inside that every option group that we are having some values with the related to the option right now this id is case sensitive. What is meant by case sensitive? If I'm going to give some values over here, which are in lower case, upper case, irrespective of the values. Now, if you see, I'm having stock is over here, which is upper case yes. But right now, if I'm going to give lower case yes, and then I'm going to click on enter, it will throws as null. So you have to give the ID as is in the document dot get element id you have to give with the same value which we are having in the id right now once again i'm going back to the document dot get element id now if you observe i'm having optional groups and i need to get the options over here now my agenda is that i need to get all the drop down values which are available in the drop down i need to get it right by using run javascript function on the web page now before that how can I get this option one by one? Now I'm going to use dot options and then each and every option will be stored in indexes format. That is starts with zero, one, two, three, and so on. Now, if I want to get the first value of the dropdown, then I'm going to give the index as options of zero dot 
and the value I'm going to get it as text. There, if you see, this is called text and this is the value. Now, first I will show you the text. I'm going to give dot text and then I'm going to click on enter. Now, if you see, the first text is nift, nifty 50, right? At the same time, if I want to get the value, I'm going to give it as dot value. And then I'm going to give semicolon and then I'm going to click on enter. Now, if you see, in our first index, that is index zero, we are having nifty 50 and the value also is next nifty 50. Now, in some cases, the text and the value may differ. At that time, it is better to take it the respective values, right? Right now, I'm going to take the text. And But if you observe in my ID, that is equal stock select, I'm having more than 50 plus of options. Now, how can I retrieve all these options? So now, first of all, I'm going to define where DDL equal to document dot get element by ID of I'm going to give the ID. What is that ID? Equity stock select. So this is the first one which I'm going to do that. So I will get the entire drop down value into the variable that is DDL. Right now what I have to do this document I want to loop it every time. So this DDL, I need to loop that. So for that, what I'm going to use, I'm going to use for loop over here. For loop, I'm going to initialize with int i equal to zero. And after that, i is less than DDL dot options dot length. Now, what are the length that we got it in the DDL dot option dot length? It will go through the loop by using for each action, right? And after that, I'm going to for each and every time that I will get the text from the drop down and then based on the indexes and then I will increase each and every one, each and every value by one. OK, so this is how I will do that. Once it has been done, I'm going through the loop. And after that, I'm going to right now, I need to add to this string over here. In a such a way, I will show you that entire code to make you understand. Let me clear this once. Now, if you see, I'm going to put the document.element ID that is equal stock select, and then I'm going to give the value inside the DDL. Now, I'm going to store the length of the count, that is count how many values that we have, and I am going to use the loop that is for condition and then I'm going to initialize with i equal to zero and i is less than ddl dot options dot length and then I'm going to increase by one. Now each and every time it will check one and then if it is equal to ddl dot length dot minus one in that case I'm going to put it output plus ddl dot options of i dot text. What is this i? i is nothing but indexes that is zero, one, two, three and so on and then if it is each and every time, if it is length less than length, then it will go for the DDL dot options dot one. And then it is concatenate with the semicolon. And finally, once it has been done, it will give the output that is var output. Now, if you see over here, after writing this entire JavaScript that we got it in such a way, nifty 15, nifty next 50, nifty mid cap and whatnot, all the values have been came over here. Now, I'm going to use the same JavaScript over here. Now, let me go back to the Power Automate desktop and then I'm going for the browser automation. Inside that, that I'm having run JavaScript function on web page. If you see what it will do, it will run the JavaScript function on the web page and get the return result. Let me drag and drop this action onto the workspace. Now, if you observe the parameters for the run JavaScript function, first parameter is the web browser instance. That we know that what is the instance we need to give it, that is browser. Now, what are the JavaScript we have written in our developer tool? I'm going to give it inside the JavaScript function over here at the second parameter. Now, if you see over here, function execute script, and then I'm going to remove this comments line, and then I'm going to paste the same JavaScript which we have done it. 
Now, if you observe over here as an additional part, this function has to return the output so that I'm going to return the output over here. The output will be stored inside the result. So I will make it as list result and then I'm going to click on save. Now, from this run JavaScript function on web page, we got the entire output as a string with semicolon for each and every element ID. Now what I have to do, I want to split them and them add to the list. How can I go ahead and do that? I'm going to use split text action. Let me drag and drop this action onto the workspace. What is this split text action will do? It will create a list containing the substrings of the text by separating the specific delimiter or regular expression. Now, I want to convert the text into the list. What is the text I need to select as the parameter? I'm going to select list result is my string or variable. I'm going to select list variable. Now, as a second parameter delimiter type, I will give it as custom. And then what is the custom delimiter? I will give it as semicolon. Okay. And the output will be stored inside the text list. All right. Let me click on save. Now, once the desktop flow has run, the list categories and the text list will have the same kind of data. All right. That is the data coming from the drop down. All right. Let's run the flow to see the output. Flow execution started. To make you understand, I'm going to give some breakpoint over here. Our desktop flow is trying to open the browser and it is trying to navigate to nsindia.com slash market data slash live equity market. By using extract data from web page, it is trying to get the list of items from the drop down. All right. Let me click on run next action to show you. Once the data has extracted, it will store the data in list categories. Now it is happening in the same way to extract the data from the drop down that is category by using run JavaScript function on web page action. Once the data has extracted from the run JavaScript, so that is the output will be stored inside the text list variable. Now the flow has executed successfully. First, I will show you the output extracted from the drop down by using extract data from web page action that is list categories. Now, if you see the list categories, let me double click on the flow variable, which are having 58 rows and one columns. Now the data has came in a such a way in the data table or based on the list also you will get it. This is having 58 rows. All right. Now let me close this. And after that, we'll see the output which we have received from run JavaScript function on web page. And after that, we have split the text by using delimiter that is semicolon. And then we have stored inside the text list. Now, this is also having list of text values with 58 rows and one column. All right. Let me click on close. I hope you understand how to retrieve the data from the drop down or get the list of items from the drop down by using extract data from web page action as well as run JavaScript function on web page actions.